For 99% of human existence, we were a local tribal animal. We didn't have to worry whether there were other people on the other side of an ocean, over a mountain or across a desert. We just had to worry about our own tribe and our tribal territory. That's the way it was. We knew that we were a part of a, a massive thing that we called nature or Mother Earth. People understood since the beginning of time that we were deeply embedded in the natural world and utterly dependent on nature for our well-being and survival. Even after the agricultural revolution 10,000 years ago, when we underwent a radical shift from a nomadic existence to a settled existence, right up until the beginning of the 20th century, 1900, the vast majority of people in the world were farmers. In 1900, there were a billion and a half people on the planet, and uh, there were only 14 cities with more than a million people. Most people in the world, including in a country like Canada, lived in rural village communities. So we were farmers. And farmers understand very well that weather and climate determine how well you do in the year. Farmers know that the amount of moisture in the soil in the summer is dependent on the amount of snow you get in the winter. Farmers know you need insects to pollinate flowering plants. Farmers know that certain plant species take nitrogen out of the air and fix it as fertilizer in the soil. So farmers understand that we are utterly dependent on nature for our well-being and our existence. I believe we've undergone a fundamental shift in the way that we see ourselves that's happened in the last hundred years. You see, we went from a billion and a half people in 1900, when most people lived in rural village communities, to six billion people by the year 2000, but now there were hundreds of cities with more than a million people. And in countries like Canada, Australia, United States, Europe, the vast majority of us by the year 2000 now lived in big cities. And in a big city, it's easy to think, oh, well, we're not like any other species. We're so smart, we create our own habitat. And as long as we have parks where we can go and camp and play in the summer, then we don't need nature. In a city, your highest priority becomes your job. Our job, we need to make money to buy the things that we want. And so in a city, we shift then from a fundamental understanding that we are a part of a natural world that we depend on for our very survival to being a big city dweller where we think that we are now in charge, we create our own habitat, and the ultimate reality or priority is, is the economy. So I believe that this is, if we think in terms of system change, we have undergone a paradigm shift from being a creature living within the biosphere and understanding our dependence on it to a creature thinking it's all there for us. We now are the most numerous mammal on the planet. There are more of us than all, any rat species or mouse or rabbit, more of us than any of them. And just the fact of living, since there are almost seven billion of us now, we all need air, water, soil to give us our food. We need clothing and shelter. Just staying alive means that we have a fundamentally huge footprint as the most numerous mammal. But of course, we now have technology that we use on our behalf, and that technology attacks the planet. We can go to the deepest parts of the ocean, up any mountain, drill deep into the earth. We now are extracting material from the planet on a scale no other species has ever done. We now have a consumptive appetite. We love stuff. We love to shop. And we have a global economy that now exploits the entire planet as a source of raw materials, the entire planet to dump our toxic chemicals and waste. And when you add all of that up, our numbers, our technology, our consumption, and our global economy, we have become a new kind of force on the Earth. We, as a single species, collectively, are now altering the chemistry, the physics, and the biology of the planet. And that's why Paul Kurtzen, a Nobel Prize winner, says that this should be called the Anthropocene Epoch. This is the geological moment in time when human beings have become a geological force. 
And I believe that is the fundamental shift. We've acquired this incredible power to attack the planet at the very time that we have lost that sense that we remain part of the natural world and we still depend on the rest of nature for our very existence and our well-being. That's a fundamental systems shift. And now we are attacking the planet and you can see our inability to deal with the consequences of what we're doing. Climate change in this country, Canada, as an industrialized country, is probably the most vulnerable country on the planet to the impact of climate change. We are a northern country and the Inuit have been telling us for over 20 years they can see huge changes in their environment. We have the longest marine coastline of any country on the planet. Sea level rise from climate change is going to affect us more than any other country. And then as a country, we're utterly dependent on the economics of agriculture, forestry, fisheries, tourism, all things that are going to be hammered by climate change. And yet for five years, we've had a government that has acted as if climate change isn't real and that we have no responsibility to change our behavior. That, I think, is a fundamental change in us as a species. The denial of, or the denial of the recognition that we remain a part of nature and that we've got to be much more careful in what we do.